Welcome to the Creative Corner, where art meets inspiration. I'm your host, Otis G. Sanders. I'm a professional photographer and published author. Today, we'll be talking once again to K.F. Johnson. We'll be talking about her second book, Liar's Ball. Liar's Ball. And we'll also get some recap of the first book, which is... Behind Closed Doors. Behind Closed Doors. Welcome, Miss Johnson. You. Thank you. Thank Good you. To Good talk to, to you see again. you again. Yeah, it's been great. Been great. Now, I'm going to talk about um, your second book. Okay. But what I want to do is do a little recap on the first book and get the update because when I talked to you, you were still in the midst of selling. So right. I want to see how everything went. So it went very well. Um, Behind Closed Doors reached number one on more than one occasion on Amazon's top 100 first genre, actually in two genres for um, African Americans and, and in urban lit. Um, so I was really excited about that. Um, so pretty well. Uh, I'm I'm really pleased with how it turned out, considering it was my first book and okay. that I really didn't initially have any expectations for it at all. So, you know, for it to have um, done so well and for me to get a lot of readership was really exciting for me. Okay, now are you satisfied with your sales? Yes, um, especially like I said, for a first book for an indie author. You know, there are a lot of indie authors that I know of that don't sell at all or, you know, have never reached any um, within the top 100 at all. Okay. So um, I'm pretty pleased. And it, and it stayed steady. And even now with um, the release of my second book that, of course, jump started um, new sales okay, um, behind cool. closed doors for people who, I guess, found the second book either fascinating or something they might want to read and thought, let me go ahead and read the first book. So, okay. Yeah. Cool. Now, you did this book, the first book, Behind Closed Doors, as an ebook and also a printed book. Right. You've gone to two, three, four printings of that. Or are you doing mostly ebook sales? On um. That? Well, I'm doing. I'm still doing both. Okay. Um. I think the the ebook sales are understandably, I think, way more than print. I think a lot of people don't do print as much mm -hmm. as they used to. Um. Especially because it's usually more expensive. You can get ebooks way cheaper and yeah. quicker. And, you know, we're in a, a now, um, you know, time. Yes. So, uh, but it, I'm still selling both um, okay. and have done well whenever and I, whenever I've had book signings or anything like that, you know, they've definitely done well. Okay. Now, would you attribute the greater number or great number of ebook sales to your marketing also, which is a lot of times social media, um, Facebook and those other things like yes, that. Yes, yes, I would. Um, I do a lot of Twitter. I, well, I've learned Twitter. Okay. Um, not really that um, skilled in it just yet, but I've, I've started to become pretty good at Twitter and got a decent amount of followers. Um, I think over a thousand now, maybe. So, okay, great. Um, great. You know, and a lot of the readership have reached out. Um, I've got, I've, I have a little book group um, okay. on Facebook for people who like books by K.F. Johnson, and so they can talk about it within there. When I was speaking with you, you were saying that books club, book clubs was a big help for you as far as promoting. Are you still doing that? Yes, yes. Um, I haven't been able to do as many yet, but only because the second release was only a couple of months ago. I just released it August 5th. Okay. And um, so I have had some book club interest, which is great. A lot of my uh, previous readership it is of course introducing the new book like oh she's got okay. a new book and so they're introducing it to their book clubs as well so as usual you know there's there's still like a primary source of okay. readership for me okay great great now for all the for all of our listeners who have not heard the first interview I did with you give us a brief description of the first book before we go into the part two. The okay. Second book. Okay. The first book behind closed doors is basically about, uh, focuses on two siblings, uh, two siblings, uh, Brenda and Brian Andrews. They come from a middle class, uh, family. They have some secrets in their history and their family history. They have a little abuse and they have some womanizing and some other, Things that come to light, um, you know, as the story develops, and both of them are rather self righteous. Uh, they're in their twenties, they're partying and doing, you know, living their lives, 
and eventually the consequences of some of their actions start to come back to them as they find out more secrets about their own family in the process. Okay, great. Now with that, we will get right into the liar's ball. Okay. And at the end of our first interview, you said the second book was going to be 10 times racier, 10 times saucy, and 10 times juicier. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about that without giving away everything. Okay, well, I definitely think I achieved that. At least my readership seems to think so. It's okay. five stars as of the last time I looked on Amazon. Okay, okay. Um, some of the secrets that came to light in the first book um, developed a new character, and that character now also has a voice in the second book. So he has also brought some extra drama to the family. Okay. And with that, there um, are more dangerous situations that they've been put into. Okay. Um, a little more escapades and some more secrets that have been brought out that people would rather not come to light. And of course, you know, that's going to create a lot of drama okay. for the family. Great, 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 great. great. Mm -hmm. And this book was released when? August 5th. August 5th. Of 2014, yes. And is this one both ebook and printed book also? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. great. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. And you have actually started to market a little bit now? Yes. Or, okay. Yes, I've been doing a lot of marketing. And, and I will say um, something else that I'm excited about is when I released it, as soon as I um, tweeted about it and let my readership know that the book was released, it stayed uh, between number one and number four for the first two weeks wow. that it was released. So I was really excited about that. I didn't expect it to jump up you know, that quickly. and I But I did release a book trailer also. I made a book trailer okay. for it um, to help promote. So I think that that definitely contributed to it also because once they found out, oh, it's coming out, you know, then they started like, well, what date? What's the date? And, you know, okay. so uh, yeah, it did very well, um, you know, in its first couple of weeks. And it's, it still stayed pretty consistent, uh, you okay. know, uh, as always, people always would love to stay number one. It's not yeah. number one right now. But it's still doing very well, and it hasn't gotten any poor reviews. Okay. Now, of course, this is your second one. Yes. The first one, we talked about a few things that you decided that you could approve on right. from the first one. Right. So um, tell me a little bit about those things. Okay. Well, I, what I think I've improved on in the second book is that I made sure that every chapter gave you something to look forward to in the next chapter. Okay. So when you you know, in the middle of reading it and say you have to go to bed and you're like, all right, let me finish this one chapter and then I'll read the next one tomorrow. Before you finish that chapter, you're like, oh man, something <laughs> else is getting ready to happen. And you just don't want to really put it down. Okay. And um, I think I did a good job with that. At least the reviews that I've read, a lot of them have said that and, you know, they couldn't put it down and things like that. I tried to make it um, exciting and I tried to make it consistent with a great flow so that you know, the story eased well and made you want to just keep finding out what was going to happen. Okay, okay. Now, um, editing. Let's talk about editing. Okay. What did you do different this time? It's definitely been edited this time or better edited. I edited it and I also had an editor look at it, an editor friend, but an editor nonetheless. <laughs> okay. Go through it and make the corrections. And thus far, I've not heard of any complaints of any editing issues or anything okay, okay. like the first book where I, you know, really was too green to even think about it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now, are there going to be any different additional um, marketing for this book? Yes. Um, I've thought about the cover, and although I do love the book cover that I currently have, um, I think that it's not necessarily conveying some of the storyline that I really want to pop out to my readership. Okay. So I am likely going to have a book cover contest and have three covers to choose from and let my readership vote on which cover they think would best fit the book. Um, and then probably re-release you know, a second edition of it with the new cover. Okay. Any Anything else in addition to that? Um, I'm working on a third book, and um, there is an excerpt from the third book at the end of Liar's Ball, so you get a little taste of 
what the next book is going to be. Okay. Um, and um, it's already titled, and uh, it's called When I'm Bad, I'm Better. Okay. And okay. Um, it's just going to be in the same vein as these other two books, but it's a completely different situation, completely different characters, completely different storyline, but it will be just as saucy. No continuation. This is whole new. No different. continuation. Um, okay. Okay. You know that's not to say that there won't be a third book. Okay. Or follow up to this, but that the next book just isn't that. Now, when do you expect the release date for the third book? Um, I'm hoping for early 2015. Okay. Okay. Now, tell me how you are actually managing all this because I, I know you're married. I know you have kids. You're mm -hmm. in the middle of moving and doing everything right. that a mother has to do. Yeah, well, you know, nothing you want comes easy, usually. <laughs> nothing <true>. good. <laughs> yeah. But do you have a writing schedule? How do you approach it? Um, I, I force myself. Um, <laughs> now, when you force yourself, mm -hmm. does it flow or you just have to wait well, doing that force? I just make sure that I'm always doing something that has to do with my book at some point during the day. Either I'm writing on the on the new book or I'm doing marketing for the current release. Okay. Or looking for new avenues to try to uh, reach new readership, or um, whether it's just talking to readership on Twitter or Facebook and just keeping in line and in touch with those who you know are buying my books or what they like about the books. Um, just trying to keep abreast of things because I think that that's um, one way to just stay relevant and also. When I do that, you know, it gives me more inspiration to actually write. So even okay. if I don't have the time to write, you know, I might be thinking about the storyline as I'm driving home, you know, what I want to add to it or what I might want to change or something that a reader may say may give me, you know, an idea. You know, mm -hmm. they might say, hey, well, what about this? You know, why don't you put this in there? And for all they know, I might actually do that, you know, based on okay. a suggestion. So. Okay. Now, if you're driving, let's just say back and forth or mm -hmm. to or from work, mm -hmm. and you have an idea, right. do you are you able to remember it, or do you have to jot it down or make a note? Or I you... try to do. I definitely try to, um, whether it's make it a draft in my phone, you know, okay. <laughs> or uh, record it, or you know, voice record it or something, or type it up wherever I'm at. Or when I get home, I try to make sure I write it down. Uh, unfortunately, my memory is not as great. <laughs> as it might have been <laughs> at one time. Okay, okay. And um, and a lot of story ideas, too, that I think of sometimes involve, like, uh, you know, narcotics that might cause a certain effect. And I might not always remember the exact name. So if I hear one somewhere or see something, I'll write it down and maybe, you know, write down what the effects are or look it up. So a lot of stuff I have, like, little notes here and there. And then I just keep it um, with my writing stuff okay, when okay. I when I'm writing I put it in there and now you have two books one is the continuation from the the second one is a continuation from the first right. and they're well let's just say a continuation right. do you think you've found a niche in that or is this just a a couple of books you've written or have you found a niche just yet um I, I think I'm finding that I like family drama I like okay. to have uh you know people in close relationships betray each other okay. <laughs> and so I um i think it makes for um a better story because i think some of some people have unfortunately experienced that or they have family or friends close friends to them that have betrayed their trust and um i think that it's an easier story for me to develop because i can imagine that these things could really happen and I, I like I like realism um when I read books myself or when I watch movies I like to feel like I can believe this will really happen oh, so okay. I think that that's easier for me to write because I can I can really feel like I can make it real okay now what other authors do you like to read yourself um I've become a really good fan of um Carl Weber um I think because he's also from Queens New York that's where I'm from um, and I only started reading it because a friend of, of mine suggested it. And they were like, oh, he's from Queens. But I found that I really enjoy his books. I like okay. his style. Um, I like Omar Tyree. Uh, I would say um, I have maybe haven't read as many Terry McMillan books lately. 
but I'm I'm a fan. Okay. Um, I would okay. say that th- those are my main two that I've I've read the most of lately. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, um, speaking of other authors, have you been getting any feedback from authors? Yeah. Um, well, for the first book, um, I was excited when Omar Tari. Uh, said something back to me. He he, he quote uh, made a, a comment on Twitter that he liked my book cover and and he thought it it was interesting. So you know, being a new author and having an author that you read and and have followed make a comment, you know, was really exciting for me. I was like, okay, well that's great, you know. And I I hadn't solicited any comment. He just um, DM'd me. And okay. I was like, wow, you know. So that was good. And um and I've kept in touch with a lot of other authors, some indie authors, some um, that have already had a lot of um, publicity, but uh, I think he's probably the biggest name okay. or the most well-known author that I've had contact with. Okay. Now, your writing, have you had any writing classes or this is just something that you're just good at and you just pursue? Uh, I always wrote when I was younger. Um, I won a writing contest in the sixth grade a poetry contest statewide, and I, I won and got a pen from the mayor. Um, I always liked to write little stories and stuff, and I was, uh, you know, I had a crush on Ralph Tresvant from New Edition, I used to write okay. stories about marrying him and, <laughs> you know, all kinds of stuff like that. And then when I was in college, I took a lot of writing classes, okay. and one of my professors really encouraged it. He really enjoyed my writing style, and, and that, that encouraged me to write more. Okay. So okay. after that, I just wrote, you know, a, a lot as a hobby, um, and and eventually just decided to do something with it a couple okay. years ago. Okay. Now you said in the first interview that your parents read your first book. Uh, well, partially. Oh, partially. I didn't really want them to read it because okay. <laughs> it's a little more racy than I would like them to see. Well, now, since this is 10 times as much. Yeah, well, they <laughs> hadn't read that one either. Well, what happens, my dad, um, you know, I showed them the dedication that had their names in it, and they were excited. And my dad started flipping through some pages, and I was like, well, you know, you don't have to read it. You know, I just <laughs> wanted you to see it. And then he read a couple of pages anyway, and then he said, well, this isn't true, right? This isn't a real book. I said, no, it's fiction. He said, oh, okay. So I guess he figured whatever he saw, you know, as long as it wasn't real, he was fine. <laughs> now, do you think he'll probably read it and just not say anything? Or? Um, I don't know. Um, I can't say that he's a big reader as far, you know, he's more into the news. Like he'll read newspapers and stuff okay. like that. Okay. But you never know with parents. I mean, he's been promoting my books at the church. So I think that that's, you know, really funny. <laughs> and um, I was surprised that he was asking me did I have business cards which I did and he was giving them out to people at the church okay. so. <laughs> well he's proud of you and all yeah. your accomplishments yeah so he could have <laughs> okay. now have any of your friends or anything um, drawn any similarities to the book and asked you about things yeah. like that I have a few friends who think that the book people in the, char- uh, the characters <laughs> in the book are based on them um, they seem to have fun with it I mean I, I don't really dispute it. I mean, some of them, it, it, I, they were not characters in the book, but if it makes them happy to think that that's okay. what, where okay. I drew it from, I just let them enjoy it, you know? I was like, hey, yeah, okay. You okay. know, but um, yeah, I've had a lot of support that way and a lot of people who, I guess, think that they know who some of the characters are and, and some, some things they may be correct on, you know, maybe some people that have some characteristics and they're like oh i know where you got that from you know so you know that's fun as long as they're having fun i'm having fun okay now tell me how you feel about all this the Um, whole thing i i i think that i'm a little impressed with myself like i really didn't think that i would actually follow my dream that way i mean I've, i've done a lot of things you know i had a lot of different dreams acting and modeling and writing and stuff but um actually getting feedback from people who don't know me from anywhere (laughs) you know and enjoying something that I've done has really um I think helped me personally feel like I'm fulfilling something within myself you know um feel like I've made like an accomplishment and some kind of mark um to have my children you know tell people at school my mom wrote a book you know I you know it makes me proud that they're proud 
that I've done something. Not that they're able to read them because they're too young. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, the fact that they're proud and my husband is proud. He's telling people at his job and he's got people at his job, you know, purchasing my books and, you know, asking about sequels and things, you know. Um, it just makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I've accomplished something um, personally. Okay. And hopefully it has inspired you to, to go bigger and farther and do more. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, um, when I, you know, we went to see Addicted this past weekend, um, Zane's new movie, and uh -huh. I, I have read that book also. Um, and, you know, things like that to see that authors are coming out with books. I know that Carl Weber is coming out with a movie um, for, I think, The Man in B. 13 or I forget the name of the okay. book but you know just to see that authors black authors in particular are starting to bring their books to the big screen or even the small screen if it's on you know cable or something is an inspiration for me to think and hope you know that maybe one day one of my books could do that also okay now do you think your success as it is now would have been the same like say maybe 10 or 15 years ago pre uh, social media uh, and helping you get the word out I don't think so I think because a lot of even my marketing and um, my drive to self-publish and uh, just being able to get the word out to people like you said has because of social media and because of Google and um, being able to reach out to authors that I don't know um, Goodreads, you know, has been a great help for me to connect with readers and with other authors. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't think I would have been able to do that. I don't think I would have had the confidence um, because I wouldn't have had a lot of information at, you know, at my fingertips the way I do now. Okay, okay. And of course, we wouldn't be sitting here because I would have no place to put this interview if it wasn't <laughs> going, right. to the, going to my so YouTube truly. channel. Yes. Right, yes, right, exactly. right. You know, I mean, the the internet and, you know, social media is has just been um, great for me marketing-wise. I mean, my book trailer is on YouTube because of that. Um, you know, Twitter, uh, Facebook, I have my own website, Goodreads, and because of that, people who are total strangers to you may come across something and send it to a friend or contact you for, you know, some kind of assistance. The person who's helping me with my book was someone that I was asking her to promote for something else. And she's like, well, I can help you with the cover if that's what you're looking for. Okay. Great. You just never know, you yeah. know? So, yeah, it's just been, it's been a great experience for me. Okay, great. Well, I know you're busy and I know you have lots of things to do being <laughs> the woman of many hats as you do. <laughs> but I, I do appreciate you taking the time out and I'm glad I could be here during this time so that I get a, a, a new interview with you before the book gets too old and we get to talk about it. And also, once again, I do want to get back with you for the third one right. and the fourth one and right. the fifth one. And all I the will way make up. sure to contact <laughs> you. And I really do appreciate you, you know, even thinking about me and keeping me in mind, you know, for your awesome website, also for your YouTube, because, um, you know, everybody needs somebody and <laughs> without support, you know, my, no one would hear or read it. And I really appreciate your kindness towards me no and, problem. um, you know, reading my books as well, you know, it makes me smile. Everybody <laughs> that reads my book and has anything good to say about it is a friend to me. <laughs> So. Great, great. Well, I enjoyed the book. And before I go, I must say that you were talking earlier about saying that uh, people might say, well, I'm just going to read another chapter, then mm -hmm. I'm going to stop. That was me. <laughs> Since I read the first one, I'm going like, okay, I know the characters. I know what they've done. And mm -hmm. let's just see what they're going to get into. And right. the third character, I wasn't surprised that he was there. <laughs> I was glad that he was because that did make it a lot more juicier. Uh -huh. And I, I got a really uh, kick out of reading the book. Yeah. And as far as the editing goes, mm -hmm. when a book, when I read a book like yours, it just flows. If there is or was anything that wasn't right, I don't see them because I'm following the story. Okay. I'm trying to get to the next point Great. where all the action happens. And then when I turn that last page, I'm going like, Wait, it's over again. <laughs> but it, it's it's definitely a great read. I Good. really enjoyed it, and I wish you much much success. Thank you. And once again, I will give you the closing remarks. Okay. Right now. Well, I'd like to say um thank you to anyone out there who's read any of my books, um and if you have not, please 
you know, take a moment, go on Amazon or any of your online sources or even the Barnes and Nobles and look up Behind Closed Doors, which is my first book by K.F. Johnson or Liar's Ball, which is my second book and a follow up. And there will be a third coming. And please feel free to check me out at www.kfjohnsonbooks.com or on Facebook or Twitter. K.F. Johnson Books is my uh, signature for everything. So look me up. I do follow back. And I appreciate everybody out there who reads. Mrs. Johnson, thank you once again.